Thank Excellent. You. All right, and I can get started. Hello, and thank you for joining us for our webinar during this lunch hour today. My name is Nicole Lind, and I'm a librarian here at the main branch at Mesa Public Library. I'm excited to introduce you to you the topic of our webinar today. Today's webinar is Summer Savings by Reducing Water and Energy Use at Home. Between hot, dry summers and having more electronics to plug in, utility bills can be a major expense for any household. We can help. Learn about solar incentives, rebates for electric vehicles, landscape incentives, and so much more. The City of Mesa Water Conservation and Energy Office and SRP are teaming up to provide residents with easy tips on how to save money, energy, and home, save money, energy, and water at home while promoting greater comfort and livability from simple to higher tech ideas will help put more dollars back into your pocket. If you have any questions or comments for our panelists today, feel free to ask them in the Zoom Q&A feature at the bottom of your Zoom window. And our panelists will be monitoring the Q&A questions and answers throughout. It is my pleasure to pass things along now to Donna DeFrancesco, Conservation Coordinator for the City of Mesa's Environmental and Sustainability Div Division. Donna will set us up with our first presentation today. Over to you, Donna. Unmute. Okay, got it. <laughs> well, welcome everyone. And Nicole, thank you so much. And uh, we really appreciate that uh, you're hosting us today. My name is Donna DeFrancesco, as Nicole mentioned. I'm a water conservation coordinator for the City of Mesa in the Environmental Management and Sustainability Department. Yes, I think we have the longest department name in the city. <laughs> and our group does oversee environmental programs like water quality, air quality. We have a solid waste division that takes care of all the solid waste, recycling, and those types of things. And our group does a lot of the water conservation, energy conservation, and uh, for internally for the city and also with the public and then um, also sustainability outreach. So we're very excited to be here with you today. Very excited about this program. And even though we can't see you in person, um, we're, we're just glad you can join us virtually. And if you're eating your lunch, man, we don't have to, we won't be drooling over your delicious lunches that you're eating right now. Um, so today, as, as Nicole mentioned, we're teaming up with SRP as well uh, to, provide, to provide you these tips. Um, the first thing though, that I want to do real quickly is a shout out to the library. First of all, they are the model of sustainability, aren't they? They were like the original model of sustainability, having books for everybody to borrow. Everybody didn't have to buy their own books. You could save all those resources, no more, you know, save paper and all the, the money it costs to transport books around. So we love that. But they have done so many other things. And I don't know if you're familiar with the Stuff Brary, where they loan out all kinds of other things that you don't have to purchase. One of the things I love is cake pans. How many times do you need to do a Cinderella cake in your life? So you can get these cake pans from the library, just use them for what you special event birthday that you might have and bring them back. And so they have uh, binoculars you can check out, hiking kits. Um, and you can also, they also have a seed library, by the way, where you can check out three packets of seeds each month. The best part, you don't have to bring them back. <laughs> if you do have a bunch of seeds left that you want to, harvest and bring back and share you can but you don't have to and they also have something that srp provided to them uh, a few years ago which is um, a energy monitor a little plug-in monitor that if you want to see how much energy something in your home's using you can check that out uh, especially if you're like trying to tell your kids you know that uses a lot of energy uh, you can test it out and see exactly how much it's using so uh, look for those also at the library uh, and then of course i want to thank tanya hughes at srp she'll be speaking in just momentarily but um, she's just been great working with us here at the city and putting this program together. So let's get started. I wanna talk a little bit um, about the uh, webinar logistics. Uh, all of you will be muted. We don't see you visually, unfortunately, so I can't see you nodding or put, giving me a thumbs up or anything. Uh, the, the session is being recorded. And so the good thing about that is we'll be able to make it available to you uh, once the, the program's over, it'll take us a few days to do that or maybe into next week. And um, you can, as, as Nicole mentioned, you can use that Q&A sections, what we prefer. You can do the chat and that'll just go to the panelists. The duration should be about an hour. 
And uh, we will do a follow-up email with a link to the presentation video and a list of resources, because I know we're talking about a lot of things today. So I want to uh, kick it off to my coworkers, uh, Anthony or Tony Kadoran and Lois Griffiths to talk about our Mesa Energy Resources Department. Great, thanks Donna. Am I coming through loud and clear? Great, okay. So like Donna mentioned, my name is Tony Kadoran. I'm the Energy Resources Program Manager here for the Energy Resources Department at the City of Mesa. The City of Mesa is unique in that we own and operate our own electric utility in the heart of downtown Mesa. And we also own and operate a natural gas system that we um, operate within the City of Mesa's uh, city limits, as well as we own a system down near the Santan Valley uh, area of Pinal County. Um, so we're fairly unique in that. We're the only city in the valley who actually owns our own poles, wires, etc. So we're a little five and a half square mile island uh, within SRP. But that's not to say that we get our power from SRP. We actually get our power, um, about 20% of it comes from uh, renewable hydropower from the Colorado River uh, and dams along that river. And the remainder uh, we actually purchase on the wholesale market from energy marketers. Um, we also have, um, we just achieved a megawatt of customer owned solar. So we have a program uh, which Lois will talk about a little later uh, that allows our customers to put solar on the rooftops, uh, self generate and um, reduce their utility bills while um, paying for uh, them, them having uh, solar equipment on the roof. So um, just for perspective, SRP peaks between 6,000 and 7,000 megawatts. We peak at around 90 megawatts. So on a hot summer day, that's how much power we need. And across a year, we need a total of 340,000 megawatt hours or thereabouts. Um, our natural gas utility, as I mentioned, is much bigger than um, our, our electric utility, um, but both require a significant amount of effort on our part uh, to keep running. So let's go to the next slide. And so I just wanted to go over some of the challenges that we're seeing as an electric utility nowadays. Um, there's been a lot of change in the electric markets. Um, in the West and in the East, but in the West in particular, we're seeing the addition of a large number of renewable resources, and that's really changing the, the market, the electric market for us. Um, so we're seeing uh, a lot more volatility on the market, and that's not just due to the addition of renewables. I should be clear there. There's a lot of uh, compounding factors in the market that are causing uh, volatility in the market, but suffice to say that uh, the power grid is in the process of definitely the biggest change uh, in the past, maybe we can even say century. So because of that, we're seeing a lot of price volatility. We're working very hard to stabilize prices for our customers and uh, looking at some unconventional options to, to help our customers with that. Um, and another thing we encountered was uh, impacts from winter storm URI that was over Texas. So because we get all of our natural gas uh, from Texas and New Mexico, the area that was affected by the storm that caused uh, a significant challenge for us as a gas utility as well, because um, purchasing supplies during that time uh, was very difficult. A lot of wells, gas wells were actually freezing off to where um, gas wouldn't come out of them. And to compound that, the rolling blackouts, uh, natural gas infrastructure was actually shut down so even if a well could produce, sometimes uh, the processing facility or the compression facility that would have got that gas into the pipelines didn't have power. So it really was a, a rough time for us this February. Uh, we, we view that as a temporary thing, but uh, the effects uh, of renewables, plant retirements and other volatility in the market is uh, unfortunately here to stay for a little while as we try and uh, seek other options. With that, I'll hand it off to Lois Griffiths. Hello, I'm Lois, uh, also in the Energy Resources Department. My group provides development support for commercial and residential gas and electric customers throughout our service areas. Um, just some of the programs that I wanted to outline for you. Uh, summer Electric Assistance, um, there 
our program it differs from SRP slightly, but we do offer uh, bill reductions through the summer months, uh, high heating uh, or high electric expense months. Um, the monthly service charge on a bill is suspended for those months. And so that would appear on a customer's um, July, August, and September bills. We also waive the charge for the first 80 kilowatt hours and um, that adds up to savings over those three months between 50 and $51 for uh, customers on that program. It requires annual application income requirement and verification. And we have a, um, a, a person who coordinates that program year over year and he converted to a, all a paperless uh, during COVID so uh, people could still apply but not be exposed uh, to bringing their materials in. So I, I have um, a link for that if anyone wants that in the, um, in the q and A, also want to talk about the renewable energy service rider. Um, this is new this year. The city um, offers a way for our electric customers, our electric customers in that five and a half square mile area to purchase renewable energy on the customer's behalf. This eliminates them having the risk or expense of installing solar systems. Um, the charge adds one cent per kilowatt hour to the participant customer's bill and you can choose um, increments in 25% uh, increments between 25 up to 100% of, of the bill to participate. That will um, allow our group to purchase renewable energy on the customer's behalf, including the biogas, biomass, geothermal, landfill gas, solar, or wind. Moving on, uh, solar program, it began as a pilot in 2012 to accommodate customers who were adding solar, but also keep our staff safe. If uh, a solar customer has panels and we are not aware of them, our people could be working and um, be exposed to danger from the power coming back on the grid. Um, the top picture you see in the right is actually Donna's uh, um, installation at her house here. She was one of the early adopters. So thank you, Donna. And um, we have now hit 90 commercial and residential installations. And um, we're starting to see customers add storage um, to insta installations as well. We've, as Tony mentioned earlier, we've hit a one megawatt milestone here in the service territory. And um, again, I have a link for that if anyone needs more information. What uh, we have uh, progressed to over time, uh, the, your bill isn't, your, your electricity usage isn't immediately impacted by reducing what your meter reads, but rather our program offers bill credits over time for the energy that a customer solar installation puts back into the grid. Um, finally, um, we get a lot of questions about other programs and rebates. Um, for our electric territory, we do not have a rebate program or uh, some of those other offers, but we do offer gas rebates for it, customers installing new gas water heaters. That's um, a $25 rebate and gas pool or spa heater is a $50 rebate. And again, the, we have info on the web available if anyone is looking for links. All right, next slide, please. Last thing I wanted to mention is the smart meter initiative or automatic or advanced metering infrastructure, AMI is another name that you may see. Um, we have a program in process. Uh, it's working its way through internal um, candidate or vendor selection and headed for city council for approval. It's part of the Smart City Initiative and um, we'll be participating with Weir Electric and Gas Utility we'll, and Water will also be in rolling out advanced metering infrastructure starting later this year. The automated meters will allow both the city and customers to get real-time consumption data and information. Uh, the meters will allow better management communication of power outages, which will be um, a huge leap forward for us um, based on the current system. 
Uh, daily consumption data also offers customers the opportunity to manage their power, monitor it, look at what they think their bill will be, and so forth. So um, we'll also be able to add rates such as time of use, which we don't currently have the infrastructure to support, and electron, electric vehicle charging rates. Timeline phase one installations will start later this year and move into early 2022. That's all I have. And uh, now we'd like to welcome our next presenter, Tanya Hughes from SRP. Thank you so much, Lois. I'm pleased to be here today. I'm a graduate of ASU. I've been with SRP for over 13 years now. My name is Tanya and I enjoy sharing energy efficiency information with customers that I've learned over the years dealing with my own home that is right here in Mesa. I live over in Dobson Ranch and I actually see one of my neighbors on, uh, on our call today. So that's kind of cool that I, I actually recognize a name. So that makes me happy. Um, also here with me today is my coworker, Lena and she is going to be diligently dropping links in the chat as I'm talking, as well as answering any questions that you might have through the Q&A uh, feature of Zoom. All right, uh, first, I'm gonna start with a little bit about SRP history. If anyone uh, is not familiar, this particular slide is, well, was the Roosevelt Dam. And now slide, <laughs> okay. Um, SRP history goes back a very long time, and uh, as a publicly owned community utility, which means we are a not-for-profit utility, that means we get to put a little extra love into our community by making customer service our number one priority. Uh, as I said, our ties go back many years, all the way back to 1902, as a matter of fact, as a part of the Federal Reclamation Act. A group of valley farmers went to the federal government and asked for their help to build the eight dams and uh, 131 miles of canal system that we have today. It's also pictured behind me in my background. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's the uh, the buttes there. And, um, and the great thing about uh, SRP being a publicly owned utility, uh, SRP customers' best interests are always at heart with every decision made. The book you see pictured here in this slide is available for free download on the link srpnet.com slash history. You can put it on a Kindle or just download it onto your computer and read it. It's actually super, super interesting and you can actually see the prehistoric uh, canals dug by the Hohokam Indians in very early AD that SRP used for our blueprint of our modern day canals. Now, we're going to explore, explore efficiency with some products and actions that can help save you money on bills and be more comfortable at home. First, we're going to start with lighting. Slide. All right. Lighting has changed a little bit over the years and shopping for light bulbs is very daunting, even still. Uh, there are so many options out there and uh, the good news is most of these options are efficient. And uh, in fact, LEDs, light emitting diodes, uh, they use over 75% less energy and are far cooler than the incandescent counterparts that uh, we used to have uh, many years ago. And those were actually phased out in the year 2012, mainly because while Thomas Edison had a really great idea when he invented these light bulbs, only 5% of that energy was creating light. The other 95% wasted heat, something we sure don't need more of in Arizona. Air SRP discounts can be found on srpmarketplace.com and it's an instant rebate. So you don't have to deal with coupons or codes or anything. Now, when shopping for light bulbs, a couple of tips to keep in mind to select the best light for your home. Uh, first, look for the lighting facts. There are a couple of examples shown here. And yes, it does look similar to the nutrition facts for food. That's by design. That way people know what, that th what they're looking at is what is gonna be inside that box. So look for the lighting fact details. 
and um, it's nutrition facts for light bulbs, if you will. Uh, once you identify the label, look for the lumen, and that is the actual light output for that light bulb. There is usually an easy, or and there's also an easy watt to lumen comparison on this slide as well. Uh, most packages do have that wattage equivalent written on the front for easy selection. The next piece of information you're going to look for is the color of that light, which is shown by the Kelvin temperature. And that's not necessarily the heat being produced, it's the color appearance. Slide. Now, here is the color temperature uh, just with a different look. Uh, just broken down a little bit more. The primary colors that are uh, available for residential are the warm soft light, which is in the 2700K. This is gonna be the closest that's uh, the closest comparison to the incandescent light that we used to have with the exception of that crazy reveal bulb that was just a little bit different than everything else. Um, the next one would be cool white at 3000K or the cooler bluer daylight measuring at 5,000K. Now there is no right or wrong to the light appearance selection. Rather, let's just try and keep the same color in each room or lighting situation. You can create different moods with different hues of light. So just try to keep that color consistent. Slide. This is something that I discovered at a friend's house. I had to take a photo to demonstrate how maddening it can be when you have various different color temperatures in one room, or in this case, one fixture. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, first, we're looking at a, a daylight color right next to the, uh, the soft white. And then right next to that is a, an incandescent. There was a lot going on in this fixture, and I was just like, I've got to take a picture of this and share it. So um, just one more reason to focus on the lighting facts to make sure that you're picking out the right light for your home every single time and you don't have to go around and uh, make returns and whatever. So it's a time saver and uh, just might help you keep your sanity a little bit. <laughs> All right, slide. All right, now I don't know how many of you still have the CFLs, the compact fluorescent lights at home or the twisty bulbs. I know I sure do, but when those CFLs expire, we wanna make sure that you're recycling them properly. I like to remind customers they're safe, free disposal nationwide at both Home Depot and Lowe's. Uh, you can also uh, visit srpnet.com slash, I'm sorry, savewithsrp.com to find the over 25 uh, ACE and true value locations where SRP has got our CFL recycling program, where you can uh, also drop off those CFLs free of charge for free disposal. And the main reason we're asking you to dispose of them safely, because they've got a little bit of mercury in them. We don't want that mercury getting into our water supply. So um, just try to recycle those CFLs properly. All right, slide. So when you're shopping for LEDs, electronics, even appliances, look for the Energy Star logo. That's the uh, this blue logo on the right-hand side of the slide. And uh, it's also found on this energy guide. This energy guide, the yellow and white uh, copy here on the left, this is what you would find on major appliances. And if you don't happen to see it on that appliance, ask the sales associate because they might just have it electronically for you. Uh, the good news is, is when you buy an Energy Star appliance, you are not only saving energy, but you're going to save water as well. So that's always a good thing. More about that from Donna later. Now, a little bit of information about how to slay those energy vampires. Slide. Energy vampires are those electric items that when you turn them off, they're still consuming energy. Here's an example. When I was growing up in the 70s and 80s, it took a little while for TVs to warm up and turn on. Now they turn on just like that. That's because they're always on. It's called residual energy. Now, I don't encourage you to turn or to unplug your TV every night, but 
focus on those smaller culprits, your cell phone charger, uh, smaller appliances in the kitchen, things you're not using all the time, a shredder, a CD player, DVD player, things that are, you're not using consistently every day that also don't need to be reprogrammed. Because if you uh, unplug your TV, you're going to have to reprogram it every time. And definitely do not unplug your cable box because you'll lose all of your saved TV shows and you'll be like, that SRP girl told me to unplug my TV and now I lost my stuff. So please don't do that because I like, <laughs> I like to hang on to my saved TV shows as well. But what you can do on this slide is a, an example of uh, various different power strips that you can plug into and cut that power uh, completely. And uh, what you can also do is discover the smart or er, smart power strips on SRP Marketplace, where uh, several of the plugs are smart, so they're sensing when that item is off and it will cut the power completely. You don't even have to press a button. So that's some pretty cool technology as well. All right. Uh, another thing, if you've got kiddos at home with a cell phone, uh, consider creating creating a little charging station for all of those chargeable devices, cell phone, the iPad, the uh, Kindle. You can leave all of those items plugged in, but hit that power button to make sure that the power is cut completely from all of those devices. If you do have kiddos, let them decorate it. Use some colored Sharpies before you plug it in or use some of that fun duct tape to make uh, so that they want to use it. It's theirs, right? It also gives you a little more control over those electronic devices in the evening. So anyway, all right, slide. All right, this next slide is actually a video and oh, looks like it's on already, but that's okay. Please focus on the right-hand side of the screen. Insulation provides a line of defense between attic temperatures and the comfort of your living space. The effectiveness of an insulated material is measured in R values. And typically, the higher the R value, the more effective the material is at reducing heat transfer. Increasing the amount of insulation in your attic will improve your comfort and make it so your AC runs less often, which will mean a smaller bill. For more details about SRP standalone program where SRP customers can get up to $600 rebate for adding insulation, please see savewithsrp.com. All right, slide. All right, ACs and filters. SRP has got an excellent tiered program for AC uh, and it is based on size or tonnage. If you're not an SRP customer, please check out your utilities website to see if they've got something going on for you. Uh, if an AC is not in your budget right now, please have your AC looked at at least once or twice a year to make sure it's running as efficiently as possible. In addition to uh, having your AC serviced, something else that can keep your bills down or moderate would be choosing the right air filter, making sure that AC is keeping clean, especially during the hottest months of the year. Choosing the right air filter is important, and here are four different filters to consider. The one all the way on the left is spun fiber fiberglass. It's very porous and uh, we do not recommend it at all, primarily because it's letting a lot of dirt and gunk up into your AC. It's also gonna come back into your home. Who likes to dust? Not me. You're gonna be dusting more with a spun fiberglass air filter. Now, the one that we do prefer is right next to the spun fiberglass. This is the mid-grade pleated, and you can actually find a very moderately priced Three pack of both Home Depot and Lowe's for under $10. Uh, the remaining two I like to point out are made of thicker, denser material and the pleats are closer together. That means that you're uh, going to be restricting that airway and you're going to see a higher bill. And you're also going to see just a higher price tag at the store when you see those words high performance on the air filter. So, uh, Try to stay away from those high performance air filters, focus on the mid-grade pleated 
three pack at Home Depot and Lowe's for under $10. Change it every month, not every 90 days like that package suggests. Slide. Here's a, uh, an example on the left of the, uh, the three pack that I pick up at Home Depot. And then also just uh, how I remind myself, I write the date on that air filter when I put it up in the return, just to keep myself thinking about it. Now, if you get to that 30 days and you don't have a fresh filter in your closet, here is something to buy you a little bit of time till you get to the uh, store to buy a fresh new filter vacuum it out. That is not the solution. That is just to buy you a little time until you can get to the store to get a fresh filter. Slide. All right. Now we're going to talk about thermostats. There are options for thermostats. There's the standard on or off. I don't really recommend this one because you really cannot participate in any time of day programs with uh, with the standard on off thermostat. I definitely do recommend either a programmable or a smart thermostat to get the most out of your utilities time of day program. Now, uh, SRP does have a great DIY video on savewithsrp.com so that you can install this thermostat all by yourself. Now, um, I've seen the programmable thermostats for under $30 at most hardware stores. The smart thermostats are a bit more expensive, but you can find really great uh, deals on srpmarketplace.com. Also, just for attending today, five lucky winners are going to win a smart thermostat just for tuning in and learning a little bit about efficiency from SRP and City of Mesa today. Now, you'll, and you'll also be notified either later this week or early next week about uh, winner status. Now, SRP does have a $50 rebate for up to two smart thermostats in the home. Even if it's an older smart thermostat, you can still apply at savewithsrp.com and, uh, and you can find out more about that. All right, moving on, slide. Now, if you don't have a pool in your backyard, your electric water heater is your second largest energy consumer in your home behind your AC. If you do have a pool, it's gonna be your third largest energy consumer. This is an example of a manual timer. There are also digital water heater timers available as well. Uh, under about $80 wherever we shop for hardware, even on Amazon. Now, your return on investment for this is going to come rather quickly. Uh, depending on how much uh, hot water you use or don't use at home. The idea here is to just have it on when you need it. I have got this same uh, timer in my garage and I have it on for a few hours in the morning and a few hours in the evening, just when I'm getting ready in the morning and when I'm doing, uh, when I'm preparing dinner in the evening. Otherwise it is off all day while I'm working, despite working from home. And then I'm, I've also got it off all night while I'm sleeping. Who's using hot water in the middle of the night? Not me. So anyway, control that electric cost by turning off that hot water heater when you don't need it. All right, slide. All right, shade is good. And I will walk a mile even further in the summertime to find a great shady parking spot. SRP has got a really excellent shade tree program for SRP customers. And slide, our next three workshops are coming up. Uh, well, we've got one this Saturday on the 31st. That one is closed because it filled up, but the next two will be on August 21st and Wednesday, September 8th. Lena's dropping information on where you can sign up for those shade tree workshops in chat right now. Now, SRP does offer six trees. You can find out more about those trees on that link. There are a couple of Palo Verde, one with thorns, one without, a couple of mesquite, one with thorns, one without. And we've also got the desert willow and the willow acacia. So we've got a really awesome selection of desert adapter trees for customers to uh, choose from. 
Now, if planting a tree is not in the scope of your yard or it's your yard is just too small, consider some desert adapted shrubs or bushes to just create a nice wall of shade in front of especially east, west, and south facing windows. All right, slide. All right, shade screens are another excellent option for shade. SRP has got a DIY video on our website, savewithsrp.com. We've also got an 80 cents per square foot rebate for new and rebuilt shade screens. On the uh, right hand uh, photographs, uh, the first photo in the middle is shade screens on home. And then the other uh, one on the right is showing you that air barrier that is going to uh, keep even more heat from coming into your home. The photo all the way on the left, this is an example of a roller down shade screen. You can find these just about anywhere. I've seen them at Home Depot, Lowe's, Costco, Walmart, Target. They're online. They're various different retailers. But this would, would be a really great example of uh, shade for patio or even for uh, a condominium or uh, less permanent residence. So you can take that shade with you when you move. Shade or slide. All right. If you can't plant anything outside, can't mount anything on the uh, outside of your home, consider blackout drapes. Blackout drapes are a really excellent and affordable way to achieve shade for room for your home. Uh, the blackout drapes are a bit thicker than the normal drape. And as you can see, they come in various different colors, styles. They even come in different lengths, uh, different retailers, uh, brick and mortar. Uh, the best selection will probably be at uh, Walmart or Target. But for just general colors, I know that Home Depot, Costco, Lowe's, Amazon is also a really excellent like uh, source because they've got so many different styles and uh, colors to choose from. But blackout drapes not only help keep that heat at the window source, but it also helps prevent fading of furniture and rugs. So just a really excellent thing to consider adding to any home. All right, slide. All right, big fan of sealing your home's envelope. Uh, this is an example of a wall of weather stripping at Home Depot. Uh, they've also got a similar uh, wall of weather stripping at Lowe's. There, there's more limited selection at Ace, but you can also find it at Ace Hardware and then also consider Amazon. But um, the best time of year to really seal your home's entire envelope is during the winter or spring when it doesn't matter if your door is wide open when you're applying this, uh, this material. There are different styles and mediums of weather stripping to consider depending on your application. So just, uh, and this is also an easy family project. So consider that as well. Slide. All right. I recently redid the weather stripping on my front door. You can clearly see the progression from no weather stripping to the whole, whole door being sealed. And you can still see that little peephole right there where I can see anybody that rings my doorbell. So um, I've, at some point I will need to have a new door jam installed because over time, my home that was built in the eighties has, basically weathered and created a big gap between the door and the actual structure. So that's the main reason that I add weather stripping to my doors because I really need to. All right, slide. Now, this final slide, I wanted to share some things that SRP is doing to bolster sustainability here in the Valley. As Arizona continues to grow the need for water uh, continues to grow along with it. Collaboration with municipalities, Native American communities, and our customers has and will continue to be an essential component of managing our water supply. Education about water conservation is always a big topic and will continue to be uh, 
will continue to be as well. This is another reason we work so closely with our city partners. Uh, we also have some great incentives to make the cost of solar a bit more affordable. SRP has got rebates for solar water heaters, demand response box, uh, Tesla battery storage, and we even have a phone number so you can get referral for up to three preferred contractors. So please do your part before you make that commitment. First, get as efficient as possible before uh, making this long-term investment. Uh, your return on investment and comfort are far quicker. Uh, second, do a solar cost analysis through your my or through SRP my account account. Um, so you have knowledge of cost before you even see that first contractor. Next, get three to five quotes. And finally, do your homework. Go to the BBB and the ROC websites to make sure that uh, those contractors are in really good standing. We want our customers to get the best service possible. And so uh, that's one reason for this preferred contractor, contractors list. If uh, an EV is new in your life or you're planning on getting an electric vehicle in the future, SRP will give SRP customers a $1,000 rebate for that new EV purchase. See details uh, on that website that Lena is dropping in. And uh, you can also sign up to be a part of SRP's EV community. Uh, you can be on our uh, advisory board. And, uh, you know, basically, we'll run things by you before we roll it out to customers. And then finally, uh, for EV folks out there uh, that might already have EV for a number of years and you're looking for that fast charger, uh, check out uh, SRP Marketplace because SRP has got instant rebates on that fast charger, but you must purchase it through the marketplace to get that discount. All right, slide. This is the final slide and is mainly for SRP customers. In red, you'll see the unique code to this event, M as in Mary, 8318 to enter on to srpnet.com slash summer landing page for, uh, and you can win big time. Uh, you can find details on that landing page to uh, discover different codes in SRP's web pages, events, and other communications through September 6th. The more entries that you have, the better your chances are to win the grand prize of an Energy Star top loading clothes washer, dryer, dishwasher, refrigerator, and an 85 inch LED uh, Samsung smart TV, all delivered and installed free of charge by Mesa TV and Appliance. Good luck to everyone out there, and thank you so much for your time and attending today. Thanks, and here is Donna. Donna, take your mute off. There we go, there we go. All right, thank you so much, Tanya. That was fantastic information. I love the sustainability programs. Uh, here's Tanya's uh, contact information, and I know they've put a lot of links in the uh, Q&A, so thank you so much. And I do want to also point out um, that there's that energy water, what we call the nexus. And that is that even though you're not going to see this directly on your bill, when you save water, it also saves energy because there's a tremendous amount of energy <clears throat> that it takes to, to move water around. And then when you save energy, it saves water because it takes a lot of water to cool like the nuclear power plants and other types of uh, processes for our energy. So keep that in mind. So I'm gonna talk to you very quickly. And I'm, I apologize, I'm gonna go very fast here on ways to save water. And I wanted to let you know, you can take a picture of this. Uh, Nicole's gonna put these links in the chat, but I'm gonna have a lot of links that you can access later. It'll also have <clears throat> that information on uh, this video when you're done. What we're gonna zoom through, a little Mesa SRP history, the situation, why it's important to conserve my top water saving tips and those resources. So just a little history. This is Main Street Mesa, the Nile Theater. It's, it's that constant. I love always seeing the Nile in these pictures. 
this is looking the other direction. Here's the Nile here. And if you haven't been to the Nile lately, they've done a beautiful renovation and trying to keep that historic look. But downtown Mesa became prosperous during the construction of the Roosevelt Dam. Thank you, you know, SRP and their work that they did with that to tame the Salt River because it would either flood the valley or dry up. And so um, this made a big difference for Mesa. The Stapley Building prospered during construction for building supplies. Uh, and that was downtown until 1968. Um, and then in 1907, there was a surgeon that, that worked for the Roosevelt Project, had an office uh, in the Chandler Court building that was in downtown Mesa, and he established everybody's drugstore in the east wing of the building and then expanded that to the corner of Main and McDonald. It was here until 1991. So raise your hand if you remember this uh, drugstore, and I so wish I could see how many people do. So Tony talked a lot about the situation. I think it's good for you to have some of the background of what's going on. Certainly, you know, this was was a photo I took on at sunset on June 14th. We were having the fires, certainly those 117 degree days. We know we have little rainfall here, usually seven to eight inches each annually. We have that low humidity, high heat, high winds that really impact our environment, our plants, our landscapes, and how much water we use. Um, an example, 2020, we had just 4.7 inches of rain. So we really came through this year on very, very dry year. Uh, 2021 to date, we actually have 3.28, depending on where you live, you probably have more, certainly if you're from Scottsdale. Uh, Tucson, they said had 80, eight inches already, just incredible. But I wanted to show you a little bit about the drought monitor. It's showing, um, this is cur the current drought monitor. If it's the deep red, that means we're extreme drought uh, or exceptional. And then the bright red is extreme. And, um, and then the, this color is moderate. So just take a look at this because I'm gonna switch back. This was July 6th. You can see we were actually in worse shape before those rains. I'll go back again. So this is current. This was a few weeks ago. And so you can see that difference. But I also want to show you this shot, which is <laughs> 2019, April 2019. I had never seen the drought monitor with this little color, especially for Arizona, even the whole country for that matter. And you can see that um, in 2018, especially October, we got a lot of rain and we just had constant rain throughout the months in 2019. And that led to us being in pretty good shape at that time. But it changes all the time. And that's the nature of our state and the nature of being in a desert. Um, and so here's some ideas. We do get 86% of our water from surface water supplies, either Salt River Project or Central Arizona Project. We get about 12% from groundwater. Uh, and we do have reclaimed water that we reuse for lots of things. So this gives you an idea from our 2020, um, the uh, consumer confidence report that we can make available to all our water customers about the quality of our water and where our water comes from. And you can see again that these are the percentages. Please go to the mesaaz.gov forward slash water to get all kinds of information about our water resources. So why is conservation important? We live in a desert. You know, this is a scene looking at downtown Phoenix, but here's a, I think I took this from the Boulder Mountain neighborhood. Uh, you know, we, we are a city in the middle of the Sonoran Desert. So, you know, conserving water really should be a part of our daily life. You can't get water from a cactus, even though this guy's showing you can, it's just, I think, a funny picture. <laughs> and, and these days he could get probably fined for destroying that native cactus, by the way, so don't do this. Um, and the challenges we have is that, you know, we receive, again, that seven to eight inches of rain a year. But if you're growing grass, turf, and or high water use plants, they lose over six feet of moisture. So this is showing, you know, how much rainfall we're getting, inches of moisture, and how much water those high water use plants need and that they use through evaporation and transpiration through their leaves. So that's a lot that we have to provide for them to survive. And we found that up to 70% of water use is outdoors, especially with these grassy uh, high water use landscapes with pools or high water use plants. Um, and that's why we created this little graphic of the drain being in the yard, because sometimes the biggest drain in the home is not in the home, but outside. So we want people to, to make sure they understand that outdoors is very critical. So how much does a desert dweller use? This is a, a, a amazing display that we have through our Water Use It Wisely program. We have 18 partners in that program and we share this and set it up at libraries or city halls. And it's one person uses about 120 gallons 
every day. And so you can see, and, and that's why we created this display because it really is impactful and really shows you, you know, visually what's going on. And if you want to figure out your own water use, um, this again, just is, is just an infographic that's showing um, breaking that down as to how you're using that water. But, you know, just look at your water bill and you're going to see uh, Mesa bills in thousands of gallons. So if your bill is showing the, like in this case, the number 21, it says build in thousands. So that's 21,000 gallons. Um, in this example here, let's say it's just 11,000 gallons that was used in the month and that you're three people in your household and divide that by 30 days. And you can see what that gallons per person per day is. Um, re remember that your water bill is based on your water usage for the previous month. The other thing I wanted to show is that Mesa does have a conservation water rate that's increasing tier structure per unit fee by volume. And I'm keep, not going to get into this uh, very much, but if this is a 34,000 gallons was used that month, their water bill is going to be $198. And basically you're charged an increasing amount per thousand as you're using more water. And we can get you more details on that if you have questions. Again, just reasons to save water is, is our environment and our native uh, uh, fauna, our animals and plants that uh, really need our help to survive. We live in Arizona, which has, you know, uh, one of the natural wonders of the world that's formed by this this Colorado River. So, and again, more reasons to, to save. And then I have to give a shout out. We had just uh, adopted a climate action plan. Well, the council has, has uh, accepted that, that we're going to be looking at further. I want to let everybody know we're going to be reaching out to the public to get feedback on this. So keep an eye out for that. Okay, my top water saving tips, zero escape landscaping, of course, because it just as you'll see it encompasses so many things. First of all, I want to say let's let's get the pronunciation. Zero escape is how you say it. I've heard exerscape and all kinds of other pronunciations. But if we, what we don't want you saying is zero escape because then it sounds like it's rocks and cactus, right? But it's we have this beautiful booklet available and also uh, online guide with the same information, but it's got a lot of ideas on planning design, installation, and even maintenance. Uh, and it's just got, it's a picture book. It's got lots of ideas inside. The principles include planning and design, putting in appropriate turf areas, efficient irrigation, grading and soil evaluation, grading to collect rainwater harvesting, for example, the use of mulches in low water use plants, and of course, finally, the appropriate maintenance. I'm going to highlight a few of these things quickly. So limited turf areas, you want to make sure they're functional. Um, and then you want to make sure, you know, make sure it's just a size you need and not too much uh, that you're putting in. It's so much more to take care of and make sure the site prep is right. This I don't think is good because you got a slope, it's in the front yard. You're always gonna have to make sure it looks nice. And so why torture yourself, right? And then just that grass to zero escape comparison. Water needs for, um, uh, you know, for about 3000 square feet of, of landscape. You'd use 105,000 gallons for lawn and only 44,000 gallons for desert. This is a, a renovation uh, conversion that was done. And by the way, we have an incentive, $550 to remove grass and put in zero escape. And uh, we have one for commercial. So if you have an HOA or, or uh, a commercial property that you're interested in, let us know. It's not only to remove grass if you'd like, but also irrigation efficiency. And you can get up to 12,500. So contact us if you have information on that. And this goes back to the residential program. Uh, this is, a, I think, a neat example of the before. And then this is right after, and then this is seven years later. But what's neat about this landscape is they put in a little labyrinth and they put their tree right in the middle. I thought that was a neat design. <laughs> and you can really see how it's progressed over the, the years. Uh, the trees are cool, allows us to provide an extra 75. It originally was a $500 uh, incentive. And so now we have an extra 75 if you put trees in, uh, as we know, just such a benefit to the environment. Mulches, of course, cut evaporation, promote your plant growth by making the soil healthier. It'll reduce weeds that are competing with your plants and just adds visual interest. Uh, it helps you recycle green waste, especially if you're using organic mulches. This is uh, the beautiful agave here. This is my backyard, but this is a Palo Verde tree here. And what I try to encourage people to do is leave those, leave that litter. That litter is 
natural, beautiful mulch. And you can also get a service, tree service called uh, chip drop, where a tree service that's out chipping and, you know, pruning trees or removing them and chipping and shredding them will will drop them off uh, in your yard to use. It actually is excellent mulch. There is a great video uh, why you don't want chip drop and it's by the people who do chip drop. But I think it's that devil's advocate. It's like, okay, this isn't like for everyone, but it's a great uh, program. Uh, low water use plants, of course, uh, just provide so much beauty to your landscape and wildlife habitat. We've got, again, a booklet and also uh, that has over 200 plants listed. And then we have uh, an online guide that's just amazing. We have a, a photographer that we just got new photos from there. And then the proper maintenance, you got to water and prune properly, fertilize sparingly, check for leaks and remove weeds that compete for water. For watering, I could talk, you know, for hours on this, but, you know, basically there's a science and an art to watering. I, I, I joke that I, I started out my, when we put landscape watering by the numbers, the booklet together, that it, we called it 357 easy steps to watering because there's so many things involved, but we really narrowed it down to know how much water your plants need. And we talk about that in the book, how much water each part of your system applies. You need to understand your drip emitters and stuff. And then you just match those two together. Um, so yeah, make sure you check out the booklet. And again, we have an online interactive guide. And just remember that your water needs for your plants increase in the summer and decrease as the days shorten and things get cooler. And of course, unfortunately, we use a lot of water when we're doing putting grass in and especially overseeding. Uh, make sure you're, another tip, check irrigation and fix leaks. So of course, again, the sprinklers tend to be the worst culprits because when they do break, you're losing, you know, anywhere from eight to 12 gallons a minute. That can really add up. Um, and then we do have a free leak detection guide. So we have, again, a booklet available. These are often available at all our libraries and we do provide the landscape books at the nurseries. But again, there's an online version. Make sure you know how to read your water meter because that'll help you check for those leaks. So we have a great little infographic that, and a video that Mesa has available that I'll have in the links. But um, again, talks to you about how to do the read. Uh, water Sense label is fantastic. And Tanya talked about the Energy Star label, but Water Sense is for products that save more than the typical requirements for efficiency. So for example, toilets, 1.28 gallons per flush instead of 1.6, and that can save you thousands of gallons. Uh, the shower heads, it's two gallons per minute instead of 2.5. So that's the federal guidelines and it's it's more efficient than that it's great to look for those labels now again you'll look for it on the toilet many of the toilets which are ultra low flow will have a dual flush so uh you know this uh, the the half flush or the, the for uh the liquids and the other flush for solids so <laughs> you get the picture now things like washing machines and dishwashers do not have a water sense label because they have the energy star label but if it has the energy star it is going to be water efficient as well uh, smart controllers help to keep your uh, your irrigation in line, and um, it's one of the technologies that's out there that actually does that scheduling for you and, and turns that water down as your uh, as the seasons change and everything. And SRP does have an expo each spring where they offer an incredible discount on that. Uh, and it's about 60 bucks to get a smart controller. And they're normally, you know, 150 to $300. Uh, check your pools and spas. There's so much uh, chance for leaks throughout your pool and spa system. The Water Use It Wisely campaign is an amazing resource. That's a campaign that started right here in Mesa. It's just a way that we get our outreach out there. We just had a local logo brand, a new update. So this is the new look. Um, and we have hundreds plus tips. Uh, our interactive watering guide, the watering by the numbers is on there. And then we have videos and teacher resources. But this is an example of some of the tips on there. You can just get really simple, easy tips. This isn't gonna cost you anything just to do these things, to check your toilet for leaks. And it talks to you about how to do that, running your washer and dishwasher with full loads. And we have a great page on rainwater harvesting. And oh my gosh, with all the rain, 
it's fantastic. And you get to see how much that contributed. We saw that water running this down the street, right? We can capture that and put it into our landscapes. You know, make sure too, you're turning your controllers off since you got that rain, by the way. Uh, there's a home water calculator and that is uh, through Mesa. And it's great. You just put in your, your house was built. Was built. You talk, tell us a little bit about your household size and that kind of thing. And then voila, you get, um, an idea of what your water use should be. And then you can compare that to your water bills. The great part if you, is if you go through that, you can request a free water saving kit, shower head, all these kind of great things. Uh, get the best tips sent right to your inbox. I have two e-newsletters, one on the watering each that I send out each month in the Living Green events each month. So you'll stay up to date if you get my newsletter. Water Use It Wisely has a great one as well. Uh, inspirational landscapes, and I'm almost done here. I'm sorry, I'm going a little bit late. Uh, just, we have a demo garden at Mesa Community College at the Dobson Southern Campus. There's a great little garden at MCC Red Mountain at Power and McKellips. This is a hidden gem. Uh, Mesa Urban Garden has a rain garden that you can see that we installed where we cut the curbs and let the rainwater in. You can see an example of that here. And it's great to collect that rainwater. And then at Red Mountain Library, we have the Monarch Haven and Reading Sanctuary. This is in the northeast corner of the parking lot. And this is when we had a work day where we had volunteers help us build a labyrinth and install some plants. It's a, we call it Reading Sanctuary because we want people to be able to walk around and, and read a book. And then we have this beautiful labyrinth um, that represents, you know, it's just a, a purposeful path where you can um, maybe do some meditation. Uh, and then Desert Arroyo Park is a beautiful beautiful park at, on McKellips Road. Uh, classes uh, that we have coming up August 18th, Plants to Provide Shade, Color, and Wildlife. I'm really going to get into plants on that one, but our past programs are available on YouTube, and that's also at that link I talked about. So you'll find all this information on the link, and um, I'm sorry I went so fast, but thank you so much. <laughs> We're just three minutes over. I apologize. But thank you all for joining us. And I hope you're all able to stay for the last few minutes. And, um, and thank you very much to SRP and our energy resources department. Nicole, do we have any questions at all that we need to answer? Um, so one question about what is the SRP code? Ah, do you want me to, let's see, is that, should we go back to that? It was M8318. Okay. Almost there, I think, maybe not. Yeah, it was too many slides ago. Ta -da! There you go. Yes, please participate in this. That's a, it sounds like a great deal. Any other questions? That was the only question we had. Very good. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for joining us for lunch and uh, your lunchtime. And we'll hopefully see you in the August program. Thank you.